and welcome to another Design Clips here at W Plus 9. This is Dawn, and in today's video, we are going to be creating these adorable little diorama cards. I thought this technique was perfect for our newest stamp series, The Crew, illustrated by Stephanie Zerb. I had yet had a chance to use these, so I thought this was perfect. So over the holidays, I received a card from my friend Natasha, and I just immediately fell in love with it. In fact, my husband proclaimed that it was his favorite card ever. <laughs> so congratulations, Natasha. You are now my husband's favorite. So I asked Natasha if she would mind if I did a video sharing this technique, but I needed to make a couple of changes. This uh, Hers turns out to be a little more square. It's about an inch deep. When you fold it flat, it's four and a quarter by five and a half inches, so it fits perfectly into a standard A2 envelope. However, I needed mine to be even bigger still when you popped it up. I needed more of that front space. So I made mine a little bit more shallow, which gave me a little bit more window room. It's still gonna fold flat into a standard A2 card size. However, this just makes it a little bit more shallow, gives me a little bit more room to create my scenes. And for that, like I mentioned, we're gonna be using the crew. I have the garden club and then school days. Now there are so many different scenes that you can create with these sets, especially if you use them together. Not, I knew I was gonna be making quite a few of these, so I went ahead and stamped out a ton of my images and then went ahead and started coloring them. Didn't really know exactly what I was gonna do with them yet, but I wanted to have as many options as possible because I knew I wanted to build some robust scenes. And the meat of this tutorial is going to be on actually building and constructing the diorama card. So I'm not going to show all of the coloring of all of these images because it did take quite a while. I just wanted to point out that these ones specifically, I stamped in Simon Says Stamp Intense Black Ink onto Nina's Solar White Ultra Smooth Cardstock. And I am using Copics to color them in. But you could use any medium that you have on hand. Water-based markers or colored pencils would be great too. Once I had everything colored in, I went ahead and used their corresponding dies to cut everything out. And then I grouped them all together in little scenes. At this point, I could add any extra details that I wanted to. You'll notice on the little girl on the upper left hand side, I added some little stripes to her sleeves. And then I used the glasses also included in the set to stamp up a little pair of glasses on her friend. I also added some lines to her friend's dress so that it was just a little bit different. You'll notice the girl to the right of her. These are actually the exact same stamp, but since I colored them differently and then I made her outfit look just a little different by adding some extra lines, I was able to customize the stamp and really stretch it. So don't be afraid to try different things like that, especially when it's just adding like straight lines. Uh, that's pretty easy to do and it's a great way to make one image look slightly different than the other. It's also great to just play around with your images and build your scene before you actually commit to your card. Uh, that way you're not worried about the, act the construction and all of that. Just putting together your scenes and playing around with them kind of takes the pressure off of actually building the card and you'll, you won't be afraid because you're not committing. You're just kind of doing a dry run here and this is how I always approach a scene card. I know a lot of people say that they have trouble building scenes. So this is just a quick little tip from me to you. Just play with them off to the side, building your scene before you even mess with your card. Because once you have that part done, the rest of the card just kind of comes together on its own. Now it's time to focus on the card base itself. So this is all constructed from one eight and a half by 11 inch piece of cardstock. I've cut it lengthwise down the middle at four and a quarter inches. And then I took one of those four and a quarter by 11 inch pieces and cut it in half and five and a half. And then I cut one of them at six inches. So this gave me a four and a quarter by six inch piece of paper. This is gonna be our front. And then the four and a quarter by five and a half inch piece is gonna be our back. That left me with a four inch piece and another five and a half inch piece. So we're actually going to use these pieces to construct the rest of our card. But the six inch by four and a quarter is our front the five and a half by four and a quarter is our back. And these are the pieces that we're gonna score on either side and that's gonna create our depth. So the six inch card, we're gonna score at one half inch in from each side and then the back, we're gonna score at one quarter of an inch in on each side. To do my scoring, I'm using the Martha Stewart scoreboard. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the six inch piece first. I'm gonna score it at five and a half inches and then I'm just gonna flip the entire piece of cardstock and score it again at five and a half inches. It's just easier for me to flip the cardstock than to score at one half inch and then at five and a half. I don't know. How do you guys do it? <laughs> it's easier for me to flip. 
On the back side, I'm going to score it at five and a quarter. I'm going to flip my cardstock and score it again at five and a quarter. So now we've got our front and our back all scored and ready to go. We're not going to do any folding just yet, though. We're going to leave it laying flat. And that's because we still need to do some die cutting. And then we're also going to do some stamping on that front panel. So it's just easier to do if we don't fold it yet. Now to cut the window out, I'm going to be using our four bar rectangles here. Our four bar stitched rectangles, sorry. I'm going to use the, the second largest one to cut my window. So I'm going to center it up exactly where I want it. And I am leaving equal space between my score lines on either side and then my top edge. I'm leaving a larger gap at the bottom so that I can stamp my sentiment. Now you could put a banner here with your sentiment if you want. There's a million things you could do, but I'm going to be stamping directly on the card base. So I've just run that through my big shot and now I have my window die cut out and my front frame is pretty much ready to go. And while I'm die cutting, I'm also going to use the largest frame from our four bar rectangle dies and I'm going to cut out another panel. This is going to be our background. We're going to do ink blending on it and it's the perfect size to fit right in the middle of that background. So I'm going to use that extra piece of four inch cardstock. It's just big enough to cut that rectangle from. So I'm going to go ahead and put that into my big shot and die cut that out. And this is going to be the very background of our scene. So here we can do ink blending on this, we can do stamping, we can uh, put die cuts on the back of it. It's just the very, very back layer. And for this one, I am going to do ink blending. This is going to be our outdoor garden scene. So I'm taking some Eclipse masking paper and tearing off a piece big enough to cover that back panel. Then I'm going to use our landscape border dies and I'm going to die cut that in half. Now this is typically used to create clouds, but I'm going to use it to create a uh, separation between the sky and some distant rolling hills. So I'm going to take that bottom piece and I'm going to mask off the bottom. Now this Eclipse masking paper is low tack um, and I've die cut it through my machine so it picked up some of the uh, residual cardstock left on the cutting plate. But if I burnish it with my bone folder, it stays put no problem and it's not going to shift at all. You'll also notice that I've burnished it down to a scratch piece of uh, typing paper. I like to do this because I can turn the paper as I go and it holds that cardstock in place so it's not shifting or jumping around on me. Once I've got the sky all inked in just how I like it, I'm going to remove the mask and then I'm going to mask off the part where I just ink blended. So here you can see that that mask is on there securely. And I can reuse that mask, I'll just burnish it again and it will, it will hold in place, but it's not so sticky that it will rip the cardstock. So here I am masking off the sky. I'm going to again burnish that into place and now I'm going to ink blend the, the hills. I'm using a little bit of crushed olive at the top of the hills because I figured this is where the most sunlight would be hitting them. And then I'm going to use mowed lawn to uh, ink blend up from the bottom. So those are going to blend into each other nicely and the very tops of the hills are going to have like this glow. Now to create the middle ground and the foreground, we're going to use that leftover five and a half inch by four and a quarter piece. And we're going to use two of the other dies from our landscape border dies. So we're going to create three levels of dimension here, foreground, middle ground, and background. So I'm going to cut this piece at the very top here to create my middle ground. And that'll leave me enough cardstock to create my foreground piece as well. I'm not going to do any cutting of this piece just yet. I'm going to leave it bigger than it needs to be. And that's because I want to add a little picket fence. So I'm going to use our fence border die and I'm going to die cut that from a piece of white cardstock as well. And then I can really work out exactly how tall I need that middle ground to be. So I'm going to place everything temporarily on the card front. And then once I am sure of how, how tall that needs to be, I'm going to use a pencil to just mark it and then take it over to my paper trimmer and trim it. I'm also going to mark where I want the fence to go because I want to add just a little bit of inking to this as well. And this way I'll remember where I wanted it. And for that I'm going to use just a little bit of weathered wood. I'm going to go very lightly over this. I don't want to color it really dark, just a little bit, just a little bit of color. And while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and ink blend that middle ground with a little bit of mowed lawn as well. Now, if you wanted to take a shortcut here, you could start with a green piece of colored cardstock and then just add a little bit of distress ink to the edges. And that would keep the continuity between the ink blended background and your middle and foreground as well. 
So I'm just going to test this out and I like the way that's looking. Now I can go ahead and create my very foreground piece of grass here and I'm going to use that leftover piece of cardstock that we trimmed off the bottom of the uh, middle ground and I'm going to use the third landscape border die to trim the very top of that so we get that little rolly hill. Now that we have all of our pieces it's time to start actually putting together and constructing our card. I'm going to start by working from the back to the front. So I'm going to pop up our fence on a little bit of 3M foam tape. I'm just cutting some thin strips here and I can hide that right behind the where the rails of the fence would be. So I'll just go ahead trim that down and then I can go ahead and stick that to the very background of our card. And if you're like me and you have trouble getting things straight, you could use a T-square ruler just to make sure that it is straight. Now the middle ground, we need to do some scoring because this is what's going to add a little bit of that dimension. It's going to pop it up. So we're going to score either side here at one quarter of an inch. So again, I'm going to use that scoreboard and I'm going to score it at five and a quarter. Then we're just going to fold those back and then we're going to fold up the very sides of the very back panel. We're still not going to do any adhesive just yet. We again want to make sure that we've got everything just where we want it before we adhere these because we are going to be using strong double sided adhesive and once it's there it's it's not coming off. <laughs> so I like to save all of the adhering for very last. Now we want to prep this very front panel. So if you wanted to do any stamping on this, maybe stamp a pattern or do your sentiment, which is what I'm about to do right now, that's where you want to do this because we're getting ready to fold that back. And if it's folded, it's going to be harder to stamp on to get a good impression. And speaking of hard to stamp on, you'll notice here that my foreground panel has some rips in it. Yeah, I had adhered it to this uh, panel before I did my stamping and then was like, um, not going to work. <laughs> so I had to take it off. But now we're all good and we're going to adhere that to the very front frame, this little window, using again some 3M foam tape. And you'll notice that I added the tape toward the bottom and that's because I knew I was going to be tucking that girl in there. Now if you accidentally didn't leave room to tuck her in, you could always cut her legs off. <laughs> that sounds horrible, doesn't it? But you could trim her down. I guess that sounds better. <laughs> you could trim her down and then glue her in. But I knew um, that I was going to be putting her in there so I just put the 3M tape down a little bit further. And so now I'm just folding back those sides. And this is how it's all going to fit together. Now I'm going to go ahead and add some of that strong adhesive that I was talking about. I'm going to add this to the middle ground here on each of those little edges. And then I will just attach that to the inside of my card. Now I did use, you'll notice, quite a few layers of 3M foam tape. So it's got a lot of dimension and it pops up, but it's still, when you fold it flat, will fit into an A2 sized envelope. So I was impressed by how much I could actually, how much dimension I could actually pack in there and still have it fold down flat enough to go into a standard A2 envelope. When you're adhering everything to each layer, it's really important to make sure that none of the adhesive is showing or hanging off of that layer. For example, I'm putting the adhesive behind her legs and I'm making sure that none of that adhesive extends beyond that hill cardstock, that first layer. If any of the adhesive is exposed when you lay it down flat, it's going to adhere itself to the layer underneath it. Now if you accidentally have some showing and or it goes beyond that layer, you can always take some baby powder or your anti-static tool and rub that over the adhesive to take away the stickiness. But again, it's really important that you don't have any exposed adhesive that will adhere itself to the layer beneath it when you fold it flat. Again, using that same adhesive and applying that to the inside flaps of the top panel and I'm making sure to adhere it to the very edge because remember that back panel is only a quarter of an inch tall. So we're gonna make sure that that adhesive is just on that very edge. And then we're gonna line up each side and adhere the front to the back. I found the easiest way to do this is to stand the card up on its side and then line up the very edges and just stick it there. It doesn't have to be perfect at this point just so that it's gripping it. Flip it over, do the same thing to the other side. 
And then to really make sure that it's held in place, I'll lay it flat in one direction and then slide it and lay it flat in the other direction and make sure that it's got a very strong bond. And now our little diorama is all put together. Now there are some dies on the market that do allow you to cut all of the pieces for these shadow box type cards, but they're quite a bit smaller. What I really loved about this version is that it's a little shallower, therefore it is almost in full A2 card size, yet you still have that dimension and it folds flat and fits perfectly into a standard envelope. So this for my purposes really, really worked because it retained all of that surface space to really build my scenes. Now to write your message, you have the entire backside of the card, or you can use the uh, negative space from that frame you cut and write your message onto that and then just adhere it to the back. So these were a lot of fun to make and there really is a lot of possibilities with these. You could use just about any images to create these little diorama cards just to add a little bit of depth and dimension and something a little fun and unexpected. I really think that anyone of all ages would enjoy getting these. Obviously my husband <laughs> loved them. And then I created a little artist version as well. I wanted to create a little studio vibe so I took the easel and I masked off the legs and just stamped it three times in the background and then filled in each of the areas with an image from the stamp sets as well so it looks like pictures hanging on the wall. And I already know who I want to send this one to. I also wanted to do a portrait version. Now for this one, I just increased the size of the card by a half inch on each side. So instead of four and a quarter by five and a half, it's four and three quarters by five and a half. And then I scored half an inch in on either side vertically. So I really hope that you enjoyed today's video. I had so much fun creating these. Remember, you can check the description box below for links to the blog post associated with this video where you'll find all of the supplies listed as well as more still photos of these projects. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.